hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room and welcome back to this little traction engine build. There's a few bits still to be made on this. First was going to be the canopy and I probably need to do that and make a little canopy for it per instructions before I lose interest in the project and don't get back to it because Kenneth Wells has said that it's it's not a particularly easy part to do. So I'd like to do it and it will happen but I don't have the tin plate or the, the sheet for it yet so it's not happening this week. The cylinder block is a fairly straightforward little piece and I think that will happen this week. It's on page 40 which is engine components and it's made up of three pieces really. Uh, there's some turning this week so everyone's going to be happy there. There's a cylinder which is half inch brass, 12mm brass, whatever you can find, brass bar and it's got a flat filed on one side and it's got a hole reamed in it and it's 45 millimeters long. There's a little end cap which is a tap fit in the end with a chamfer on it to solder it and there's a cylinder plate which is a piece of half inch by eighth brass bar. So pretty straightforward. I think tonight I'm going to make that and get that going. We've got a piece of brass which is just just a half inch by by one eighth. I thought I had a piece of brass bar, but it's only forty millimeters long, and it's not really long enough. I've got a piece, I have plenty of nine sixteen hex, lots of that. So I'm going to use that rather than last year, go and buy a piece. So it's going to be just as good. I'm just going to set it up in the three drawer, and we're going to machine it down face end and part it off the right length or fraction over turn it around and machine the end and drill it and ream it and file a flat on it and that'll be that part done sounds pretty quick it's not a big job so let's go over and do that please bear with my camera I think my, my video camera is dead so we're using this which is a, an action cam and it's quite wide angle. I think it kind of works here on this bench but um, we'll see how it goes over at the lathe. Let's chuck this up and see what we can do. Actually I kind of like that. Maybe I should use this more often. I might just face it first I think. that out 45 millimeters. So I'm just going to machine that down until it's half inch diameter a nice finish. Next job is just to part that off at 45 millimeters. Next job really is a, a center drill or a spot drill. Just to guide the center when we start. And 
we need to drill it through a fraction under 3 8 if we've got a 3 8 reamer. If we haven't, uh, find two drills that are somewhere near the same size. It doesn't really matter if this is only 8 millimetres, but it doesn't really matter probably if it's 10. Uh, find a, two drills that are about 0.1 apart and run the drill through with the small one and then clean it out with the big one. With any luck you'll get a nice finish and you'll get a nice round bore. Don't feed it through fast, just feed it through slow. Uh, give it plenty of time and keep it nice and clean and you'll get reasonable results in the engine that will run. A 3.8 reamer of course is much much nicer. So start with a smaller drill. The drill I've got here is 9.4 millimetres, which is just a fraction under 3.8. And take it easy as you get towards the end because for one, the boots are going to fill up with grass. And choke the drill. So only a couple of millimetres at a time before you clear it. And for two, as it breaks through, you're going to find that it's going to grab. But same thing again, don't take too much at a time or you'll get it in there and you're going to have to scrap the part to get it back out. So just a little bit at a time. So that's what we ended up with. It's a nice concentric cylinder there, reamed out to whatever looks like to be about the right size and machined on the outside. Next job is to put a flat on this. It's quite a simple job. It's just a 5mm flat. If we get a pen and hold our fingers there like that and run down there, that'll give us a straight line to work to. <coughs> and we need to hold this in the vise. So that it's nice and straight and parallel there like that. Find a nice sharp file. And just to finish it off so you make sure it's flat, a bit of a rub on embryo paper. And we should end up with a nice straight five millimeter flat like that we can put that aside for a bit I've cut this fraction longer than 32 millimeters there's our next piece 
is the cylinder plate. This actually soft solders on here with the flat on the center here like this. So these ends need to be nice and square. You can blue them up and just take just take the time to to file them down. Sit down with a good sharp file and get nice and comfortable. Spend some time and just get them get it right on each end, nice and square and down to length. If if you don't have time to mess around with a file and a, and a square and get this right, um, it's not a huge job to square that end and square that end. And there's a bit of satisfaction in doing it that way. If you haven't got time or you're impatient or you don't think that's good enough or you don't think you've got what it takes, there's probably all the reason that you should do it. But you could easily mill the corners here if you could take the time to set it up and get it to clamp nice and square and put another packer in the mill and and run a cutter across it and get a good finish and then take it out and measure it and try again you will get it square that way you could put it in the four jaw chuck and just face the end that's probably a quick and easy way to do it if you mark it nice just face it down to the end down to the line or you could just file it up it wouldn't take long you got this little block of brass Next job is it needs a center pop mark right in the middle. And I'm just using the Jenny Leg calipers again. Uh, very easy to set them in the center so that they both... So that you can't really even see the gap between the lines. It's really not a big deal. Right in the center. And we need to drill and tap this M3. That's that's not a huge deal to do. I'm just going to drill him out 2.6. Run a tap through it. And we'll have a look when we're done. Take a bit of care with this to get it nice and square and straight. Uh, this way and that way. Do it in the vise if you're comfortable. This is a fairly simple little part. And if you start a nice sharp tap there, you can probably nearly get it right just by hand like that. Uh, that's how I did it. But you either set it up in the vise. If you're not sure about that, it might be a really good idea to set it up in the four drawer and tap it in the lathe. That, that's probably well worth the trouble to do that. If you... If you're worried about this, it's probably one of the more critical threads in the whole engine. It's got to be nice and square. Maybe it's better to see that without that light. Next job is to put a chamfer on both sides of this at the top, just at 45 degrees. When you've got them nice and square and flat and straight, and both looking about the same, we can call that part done too. And the next part is just a cap for the end. We've got a bit of brass left over to make that out of. The easiest way to do that is to get it down somewhere very close to near where it wants to be. And Move the tool out of the way and put a chamfer on that.
Let me just check this until we get it so that it's a really nice snug fit. Just a couple of hours at a time. And that goes in there past the shoulder, so I reckon that'll be a nice tap fit. Time to part him off two mil thick. And this is where you remember that you should have cleaned your lathe because it's down there in the floor somewhere. This, that can just be filed. We're not going to worry about that pip on the end because that can just be filed off afterwards. And, and it's time to gently tap him home. We've got something with a hole in it. Might be the best way to get that square. We don't want to damage that, so... That's in nicely. And this goes on here. Next job really is to solder it. Not a big job. The book actually shows quite a smart little jig for soldering these if you've got a lot to do i.e. a school sort of situation I'm just going to bind it with wire because I only got one to do we'll get some soft wire and we'll wrap that up nicely and we'll flax him up and we'll soft solder him so all I've done is put a flat spot on two short bits of wire with the pliers just with ordinary pair of pliers and stayed them around there and wound them up nice and tight and chopped them off nice and neat made sure that everything's nice and square and parallel there and nicely in the middle it's important take a little bit of care with that We found some Baker's soldering fluid, which is killed spirits. Um, it's sulfuric acid with a piece of solder dissolved in it. It's zinc chloride. It's just the stuff for this. I've got some some resin cord silver, which is going to do the job. And I've got an acid brush. I'll flash a little bit of that in there like that. So it runs round everywhere. Around the top there. don't want too much or you're going to end up with solder everywhere and that's a bit ugly. Next job is to heat that up.
So a good scrub up and give your acid brush a wash too while you're at it. Otherwise you're going to look at it and everything on the bench is going to be rusty because it was sitting there and it's not going to last very long. So put the lid back on the acid and wash up your acid brush. A little fiberglass scratch brush is probably the best thing to clean this up. You should have a nice line of solder all the way around there. And you shouldn't have any in the threads. That's the, the ultimate test really. We've got a good layer of solder on the outside. That's not going to ever blow out of there. The other one never has, so I don't think this will. And that's what we've got. There's one last job. We've got to drill a hole all the way through here, right through the back. And leave a hole in the, an opening in the front here. It's only 1.5 millimetres. And that hole's just 3 millimetres down there, and it's in the centre. So we'll mark that out. And centre pop him. We'll hold him in the vise this way around. And we'll just drill all the way through with a 1.5 millimetre drill. Be very careful with that because that will grab when it goes through here and it'll grab when it goes through there. And you might break the drill if you're not careful and you're not holding it nice and secure. So drill press vise or a milling machine. Just run him straight through there. And we can call this part done. And there we go. That's the finished cylinder. It still needs a, a stud in here, a nice nut and a spring, and we still need to put the piston and conrod in place. But that engine's nearly done, and that's taken me, what, maybe two hours tonight, three hours, to finish that to that standard. I'm pretty happy with that. Thread should still be good. And if we check it with a square, I think it's going to be nice and square. So we're going to call this over. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching on Patreon, just a huge thanks. Thanks very much for, for making this sort of thing possible. And... More soon, guys and girls. Be kind to each other.